All right, yeah. Sorry, I washed my hair because I'm heading down to the pool and I wanted to make sure I got all the ick out of me because I went bike riding last night in the rain to go get burritos. Burrito. And like cars are driving by and splashing me. It was terrible. And I just didn't want to take any lingering ick into the pool. Anyways, so I didn't have practice yesterday. Lord knows why, probably. You know, just, you guys get a break. I'm like, we're screwed up my schedule. So I was like sitting here trying to figure out what to do for like chit-chatting about football. I mean, yesterday I vented about things going on in my life. I mean, I pretty much sat at this position staring at my computer screen, trying to figure stuff out, except I had a beard and I had crazy hair yesterday. Now I've got like limp hair. <laughs> so I figured I'd check up on the XFL um, because the first week it came up, it's week one. I watched the Tampa Bay Vipers versus New York Guardians while I was down at the uh, Irish pub near my place. Um, um, anyways, and so I, I watched the game and to an extent it looked like a slower version of the NFL. There was a lot more showmanship. I don't want to say, yeah, showmanship. That's what we'll call it. There was a lot more showmanship than I would expect. Um, which is fine. You need to bring that back a little bit, but some of the highlights that I've seen people about like week one and week two posting on Facebook, they're, you know, people are trashing it and they're like, oh my God, we thought we were actually getting real football back, but we're not. It's just, you know, a bunch of undisciplined folks trying to make it big. And I was like, so semi-pro? <laughs> Um, I guess, maybe. And so, like, I missed week two because that was the Utrecht game and there was a big old soccer match. Soccer? Sorry, I, I don't hear Americans say that word anymore. Soccer. Um, I hear my Dutch say it, my Dutchies. So they say soccer, soccer. Football, I mean, uh, soccer. I'm like, yeah, I know, I know about soccer. Like, I'm starting to say it for them because I don't have reinforcement of soccer. Soccer. I and mean, the few Brits I know call it football. I you don't know. Anyways. I'm so glad the Dutch aren't saying football. <laughs> Anyways, they, they, know it, they know it's football. American football. Anyways, so I missed week two. Probably the game I would have caught there would have been the Renegades versus the Wildcats. And then week three, I was going to go down and catch it, but I got back so late from Rotterdam. <laughs> but yeah, like the, the week two, I was just like, oh God, there's people in here watching the soccer match. And I just, uh, well, I just got done playing in the wind and the rain and it's kind of wind and rainy right now. And I mean, I could say, hey, do you got a thing? But I just wanted to sit at the bar and like be, you know what I mean? Like I just got out of the game, which ended at like 5, 5.30, and then we got on the train ride for Cheery. Well, got there, we walked over, we got the, and I went down and I was just like, you know, I don't really, <laughs> sounds crazy, but you know. If I'd had practice, then yeah. Week three, I was literally walking through next to the bar at like seven o'clock. <laughs> And like the game, I think started at nine and I would have had to watch a little and I wanted to go home and watch some Doctor Who. So I just went into the grocery store, picked up my bottles of beer rather than just going to the bar. It is cheaper. Uh, we got our burritos from this thing and then went and watched Doctor Who. And I was just like, I'm just... <laughs> the game was so cold and so windy, I didn't want to leave and go down four flights of stairs to go to a bar. So, but looking at the schedule, I would have caught the third game. That would have been New York Guardians versus the St. Louis. I almost saw that as Seattle, but St. Louis Battle Hawks. I don't know about this next week if I'm going to be able to catch anything because we only have practice this week, but the game isn't on until like 10 o'clock at night <sighs> here. And it's just like... Maybe, maybe I can catch the first quarter. I mean, Aaron's not, anyways. So I've watched numerous highlights recently and I just am like, this does look kinda, 
these guys look like they're really trying to prove something, but they're not disciplined like a college kid is. And that's saying something. Um, and, you know, I, I, I'm looking here at the week three standings, and obviously the Battle Hawks are the top of XFL East. Here's the first time I'm finding out that this, is, this has divisions. But, okay, the Houston Roughnecks are actually doing pretty good. Of course, the Dallas Renegades are also doing real good. St. Louis, D.C., New York, Tampa Bay. So the East and West division is kind of the Mississippi, as it typically is in the United States, and it's so not. <laughs> like, it is a demarcator, but it's not of anything. I mean, who's thinking ma it matches population? But yeah, anyways, so... I'm just sitting here and I'm just like, okay, so the Roughnecks are doing really well and the Tampa Bay Vipers are doing really good, really badly. Okay. Like, I don't know what to think about this. I already went over their uniforms and, you know, when it comes down to Tampa Bay Vipers, I think someone's being sued by the University of Oregon. I don't know. Like, Aaron saw it and he goes, isn't that the Ducks? And I'm like... We don't talk about the ducks in this household. <laughs> but yes, you know, so it's like, I guess I'll come back to the standings. I was trying to give my idea because, like, the the NFL draft combine is happening right now. Like, everybody's posting the videos of folks, you know, Arizona State punter Michael Turk steals the show at NFL combine. Why? No. Yeah. A punter banged out 25 reps at 225. He also outperformed 19 offensive linemen, including top prospects such as Iowa's Tristan Wirfs, 24, and Louisville's Mekki Beckton, 23, and a possible Giants target. Well, I mean, so he can bench. That's cool. But like, the combine stuff is happening, you know, Sunday all the way until it's happening all this week, so people are posting, and yeah, guys are running super fast. You know, best of the wide receiver workouts. I don't know, maybe next week I'll go over like, you know, the hottest linebackers of the combine. Let me see if I can even, linebackers. 2020 NFL scouting combine weigh-ins. Oh, defensive line and linebackers. Okay, so that was two days ago was the defensive line and linebackers. <laughs> I love how it's like QBs, TEs, wide receivers, few results. Tuesday, running backs, O-line, kickers, and special teams, few results. Thursday, DBs, few results. Wednesday, D-line, linebackers. So what, we're sitting here looking at like the average weight of a linebacker is two thir well, 230 seems to be the lowest. No, yeah, they're like two, oh, wow. Yeah, they're, they're well up into the 230s. Maybe even 240 is the average weight. There's a couple of these, there's like a 264 right there. There's a 280, wow. But like Michael Pickney there, 5'11 and 1 8th. Everyone else is over six feet. Oh. Kaliki Hudson, 5'11". Everyone else is well over six feet tall. Like, I wouldn't have never made it at the combine because, you know, my body would have just grown up to be a certain height. I mean, I can stack weight on through muscle or fat or all that jazz. And I guess that's part of the problem that I don't really like with the NFL. I mean, to be fair, it's a business and they want to have the premium players. And when you find the premium players, much like in internet gaming, you find a perfect stack and that stat needs to go everywhere. You need to do that thing everywhere. It's a cookie cutter build because when you when you have cookie cutter builds, you can you can mold the things around them or mold them into what you need, kind of. Hand, arm, wingspan. I mean, I might go over this list next week once everything's all done and whatnot. This is just like the way in. But we'll see. I'm just trying to put out a video and then go swimming. I'll catch you guys later. Okay. <laughs> and then there's like click, 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 all the like 
things clicked together and I was like, oh, it's Friday. I gotta put out a video again. Wait, I didn't even go to the bar that night. This weekend, perhaps. I don't know. It's the appropriate game I might be watching would be the Houston Roughnecks versus the Dallas Renegades. I'm just... Oh, it is on Fox Sports 1. Cool. FS1. Uh, I guess. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, whatever it is here. TV Gids. G. Gids. <laughs> it's just the greatest. <laughs> Uh, TV Gids Puntanel. Today, tomorrow, the day after tomorrow. Yes, the day after tomorrow. I want to watch that stupid movie. Okay, so I may not actually be watching that game because I just did a lot of research and that's on at 10 o'clock at night. There's an East and a West. I did not realize that one, but I guess you do kind of need it. I mean, even in the Netherlands, we have Pool A and Pool B. I am glad Seattle is on the bottom. <laughs> See, week five, they're at 3 p.m., not than 4 p.m., so that'll be like 9 my time. And that'll be pretty easy to watch, because for the, the second game on the schedule, I'm at practice. 5 p.m., no, that's midnight. Never mind. <laughs> 5 p.m. to be 11 p.m. the night before practice. Oh, well, no. <laughs> And a lot, like, barely anybody at this point is posting about the XFL. I mean, they're not even posting highlights or anything. 